should you use WooCommerce or just have a regular WordPress blog? That's what Alex and I debate today. Now, Alex is my friend over at WP Eagle and he knows how to use WooCommerce and that's how he sets up sites. In fact, he has several uh, tutorials on the topic and I take a different approach. I hardly know what WooZone is or WooCommerce or whatever it is. Actually, I'm pretty ignorant about the whole thing. So anyway, we debate the pros and cons and let's go to the conversation right now. Hey, what's up? Doug Cunnington here. I'm with my friend Alex from WP Eagle. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. I'm glad to be on. Me too, because we're going to have a little debate today. Now, we have a different approach for our affiliate sites, and you're a, a Woo, is it Woo Zone? Is that what we call that? Yeah, it's kind of Woo Zone, Woo Commerce. Uh, okay. It's e commerce style uh, affiliate sites. Yeah. Cool. And I'm more of a, like a blog content SEO side. And honestly, there's probably more overlap than I realize but pardon my ignorance. So we're just gonna debate it out and sort of hear the pros and cons. Now, Alex, if people aren't familiar with the Amazon affiliate model, can you just walk us through like the, the basics? Yeah, okay, so the way it works when you're using a plugin like WooZone or WooCommerce, you're using the Amazon API to basically download products onto your site in an e-commerce style. So people can come to your site, they can view the Amazon product. You can, of course, rewrite the title and the description and, and all that kind of thing. And then people can add those products to a cart on your site and then when they go to checkout they get redirected across to Amazon uh, and all those products are automatically added to their cart and obviously then if they, they make that purchase you get your commission which is obviously different to the way you do it if you want to explain which I think is just around you know static links right and it's basically you know a blog style so there's just content usually targeted around a specific keyword and then a bunch of content around it typically it's some sort of a review so it helps the visitor the searcher find more information about the product and then hopefully make like an educated decision based on the info on your site. They click a link on your site over to Amazon and then hopefully they make the purchase. So I see it, it matches up at some point. It's just the information which is provided. So yeah, yeah. let's yeah, talk about ahead. the benefits, the pros and cons and, and why you might choose different sites. So I'll, I'll go through the, what I think are the pros and cons with the WooZone style sites and then you can maybe go and then we can we can talk about what the differences are. So I'll go through the pros of the WooZone style sites start with. Now, the first thing is you can have a blog on these sites. They are, are still a WordPress site, so there still is a WordPress blog. And I would definitely recommend that you do build a blog because that's the only way that you're going to really attract some good inward links. So the interesting thing about the WooZone sites are they don't tend to need quite as much content in order to get them ranked because you're able to import lots of product very quickly. So you can very quickly populate your site with two, three, 400 products, providing you do some basic SEO. So, you know, you submit a site map to Google Web Master Console, that kind of thing, and make sure that your site gets found. Maybe add a couple of links here or there from some social media. Those those products tend to get indexed and they can rank for some long tail searches. So if someone's searching for, say, for example, I've got a site on, on ladies' boots. You may be aware if you watch my channel called Boot Boutique. If someone's searching for, you know, a brown Ugg boot size four in leather, interestingly, um, those products can, can get some traffic. And so what you find is that for free four maybe even a thousand products you can get you know two or three visits on each of those and, and that can add up so i recently built a site with woozone and i literally just built it imported some product maybe added one or two articles and just left it and just started earning some income pretty much straight away i mean it's not huge amounts of income it's um i think the best some of my sites do is you know two three hundred dollars a month but these sites are very quick to put get up and you know then you can just you know if you had a handful of these sites then the income could could add up the downside to running a woozone site is that they are quite resource intensive so you do need some fairly decent hosting especially if you're going to add lots of products if you don't have some content on your site in terms of blogs sometimes amazon aren't always 100 percent with them and you may get rejected as an affiliate in which case then you just need to add some content and, and and try again there's a couple of downsides that i can think of off the top of my head but and obviously the plus side is that you don't need you know tons and tons of content that you get from writers or you write yourself in order to get some traffic in all um before i explain <laughs> the blog more content heavy angle i want to talk about some of the things you mentioned and that all makes sense by the way that all makes okay, sense good. in aggregate in aggregate you can make some money a few hundred bucks which is uh actually really good considering you're not having to do a, a ton of content and a lot of the other work normally associated with such a site now yeah and, and again i mentioned earlier I'm, I'm ignorant in a lot of ways i'm well informed in some areas but just ignorant in others so a lot of times uh people would ask me questions like you know what can i do if i have you know 800 items on my site like, how do I do content? And they, they were asking questions like that. And that's where I thought, ah, oh, that doesn't make sense to have so many products on your site. You really have no practical way to add content or sort of like 
make it more full. So those are the kind of questions I got, which made me think people have too much power at their hands with the, the Woo Zone, Woo Commerce, uh, I like guess style where you could pull in all these products and not have to do any background work because your mm. videos are so good. People can literally set up a WordPress site, set up this sort of a store, and then they don't know what to do after that because, well, they've just, they again, they have too much power at their hands and they're not sure what to do afterwards. Yeah, that's right. However, and a lot of people do get carried away, to be fair, and they add lots of products, maybe more than they should. You know, if you're in a niche, then you should probably be quite specific about the products that you choose. Right. I often find that the best sites have maybe got two, 300 products, not thousands and thousands because what you don't want to be is just a copy of Amazon. Right, right. It, and it, again, like you really have no practical way to like make any like blog content on that many products, That's right? True. It's just too much. So going away from there, it sounds like you generally agree. And I think f from the blog angle, it's mainly driven in the same way through SEO traffic. However, it's a bit more targeted. So instead of publishing, you know, hundreds of products and hundreds of pieces of content technically on the site, we're looking at, you know, starting a site with like 10 pieces of content or so. And then, you know, strategically picking those keywords using like the keyword golden ratio and, you know, keyword research tools to make sure we're, you know, trying to find and publish content that people are actually searching for and that are actually buyers keywords. So it would be like best ballpoint pen for journaling, something like that. Yeah. Now the downside is, you know, typically I, for those 10 pieces of content early on that you launch a site with, I want at least a thousand words for each one of those. And that's, you know, nothing to sneeze at. You know, we're talking 10,000 words that you either have to write yourself or you have to hire someone. And if you write it yourself, it's probably the most amount of content you've ever written in your whole life, unless you're a writer, a professional writer of some kind. Or if you hire someone, I mean, you're at least talking, you know, maybe 100 to $200 of, you know, writing services to have that content done. Now, the upside is from a serving the internet and and making people like, I guess, helping the visitors, right? Helping the visitors and making the internet a better place by putting more content on there and helping them make a decision. One could argue that that's a good thing versus just having like the straight up product description with not much other detail. In yeah, it. yeah, no. I, and I, I've actually said this recently about, you know, a question I often get is why would you have it? Why would people visit an affiliate marketing site? Why wouldn't people just go straight to Amazon and buy the product? I mean, what is the point of having an Amazon affiliate site or an affiliate site in general? My answer to that is always that you are there to add value you're there to help someone buy because someone they may be in a need for you know the best full point pen for journaling but you know they're not gonna be able to find that information on amazon you can't just search amazon for that because amazon don't have the content around it so you're there to help someone they've got a rough idea what they're looking for what they need and you're there to really just help them and say look this is what you need and here's where you can get it uh, and that's yes. how you earn your commission so yeah you are adding more value um with a content site definitely and with a woozone site it's uh, say less effort but less value as well Right. And I think, um, you know, in some of my other videos, I think I, if people quoted me, I would say something like, I don't know why Alex is telling people to, uh, you know, build WooZone sites and WooCommerce and stuff. So I, I retract those because uh, what you said <laughs> makes perfect sense to me. And I think there's a blend, right? I think we could agree that somewhere in the middle, right? Like you can utilize all the WooCommerce capabilities in a, you know, smarter way, a more strategic way, and then add content on top of it using some of the ideas where you know, I, I mentioned keyword golden ratio, like that could be a great way to marry the two up. Like, do you have anything to add with that, Alex? No, or? yeah, definitely. Yeah. But a blend of the two is probably a, a great site, <laughs> you know, if you've got some really good content and what you can do is you can link to products on your site rather than just sending people straight off to Amazon, which in a way, in theory, could increase their basket size because people could add, you know, three or four products from your site to a basket. And then when they go to Amazon, those three or four products added straight away to their Amazon basket. The other thing that WooZone does that I'm not sure your sites do is it, it puts a 90 day cookie into your site do that too so people don't have to buy on the same day they can you know if they buy 90 days down the line you'll still get a commission okay so, because it's adding directly to the cart yeah that's right yeah Got i it. think it has to be those products that are in the cart yeah, i think yeah i think you're right so and that is a huge deal because in my model the cookie is only a 24-hour cookie so that's you know part of the reason why i'm going after buyers keywords which you know people are probably going to buy something in the next day or two they're researching things that are in that show that intent now, I guess it only works for that specific product that you're talking about because it's a 90-day cookie. So they have to buy that one product and that's 
like what I think you they have to buy the stuff that they've added to the, that they've been added to the cart. Yeah. Okay. So. Cool. Very good. All right. Well, anything else that uh, you could think of, Alex? No, I, I think that's it. I think when it comes to affiliate marketing, there is no right or wrong. I mean, a lot of people. I think the big question is, you know, how can I make money online? You know, should yeah. I be doing Amazon affiliate? Should I be doing affiliate marketing? Should I do YouTube? Should I do you know drop shipping? Should I do Amazon FBA? Which one works? And I think. Uh, the answer is, you know, they all work. They all work, but you've got to pick one and you've got to learn about it and you've got to put some effort in and do the work. And then any of those that will work for you, they're all they're all legitimate ways to make money online. And a lot of people have had success with all of them, but you've just got to pick one that's going to work for you and, and just, you know, keep working at it and give it some time, give it some effort and, and it will work. Cool. Now, I just, I thought of one more question. So what would be like the minimum hosting that you would recommend if someone were to you know, implement a site like you're, like you described would say, you know, a, a modest amount, say 200 to 400 products that they were going to pull in. Okay. Now I've got a couple of sites that have got a few hundred products and they're just on the host gator hatchling plan, which is one of the cheapest hosting packages you can get. But then some other sites where I've got a few more products, I have had to go up to some, uh, some more professional hosting. So I use WP engine for those. And the price difference, I think, you know, the hatchling plan on host gator is, I don't know, maybe five bucks a month okay. and WP engine is 25 bucks a month so you know it's five times more if you check out my channel i've got loads of stuff on you know optimizing the speed of your wordpress site and and all that kind of stuff so you can you can squeeze quite a lot out of basic hosting but you know the more products you add the more stress it does put on it but as i said earlier sometimes you don't need all those products sometimes you need to think i'm in a very specific niche so then i need to pick some very specific products and if you do that then i'd imagine you'd only have a few hundred cool and uh, I'll, I'll add one thing i've gone through some i'm not as uh, savvy as you but I've gone through some hosting issues even just yesterday. So I think, you know, once you hit a certain threshold of visitors, like regardless of what you have going on WordPress, um, you, you may have to upgrade. So the thing that I've found, unfortunately, each time I've hit the capacity is everything's fine until it's not like you get one or two more users a day and then WordPress kind of falls apart. Like yeah. it doesn't load and all of a sudden it's just like on, for a couple of days, like your CPU spikes and things like very bad things happen. And then I, I, just upgraded my cloud hosting to a few more processors a little more memory and everything was fine like within 20 30 yeah. minutes so and, and a good host should be able to switch you up the packages fairly quickly so there's no there's nothing wrong with starting with a small package yep. and then as you build your site up then you just you just upgrade or move or whatever it's, it's all fairly easy cool cool all right thanks alex and i think we settled the debate a blend of the two <laughs> is good so i'm sorry if i said bad stuff about you in the past no. it was it wasn't <laughs> personal you know it wasn't personal. No, no, of course. all right appreciate it and we'll link up definitely check out Alex's channel if you haven't seen him before and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for having me. By the way, if you don't know Alex, please check out his channel. We'll put some links below and make it easy for you to get to it. He's a WordPress guy. He knows a lot about uh, the details and inner workings of WordPress. So be sure if you're interested in learning more that you do check it out. Thanks for watching. I'm Doug Cunnington. Have a look at the channel. If you like the videos, please subscribe. Thanks.